Hey, in this video, I'm actually gonna build some furniture. Huh? Huh? Yeah. You know, it's been a while. Now, I don't know if you're like me, but you might go out into the world and you just can't help but stare at pieces of furniture. When you go to clothing stores or the grocery store, other people's house, because I'm always like, oh, that's kind of cool. How was that made? How's that joined together? My wife recently bought this old rickety stool at an antique store. Why? I don't know. It spoke to her. She brought it home and I started doing my typical analyzing it. I saw that there was some cool through tenons here on the sides, through tenons in the top. And the thing that really caught my eye is this kind of cool triple half lap joinery in the center of the stool. And then I realized, you know what I've never made? A stool. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've made stools. <laughs> Just never made one out of wood. Stool joke. So then I thought it would be fun to experiment around and try and make a little replica of this stool. I like the joinery in the middle. Through tenons are always a challenge, especially when they're splayed legs. I've never done it before, so why not? So in this video, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and make a stool and we're gonna see if it actually works. And without any further ado, let's get to work. Maybe I should make a sample first. A stool sample. Stool joke. All right, these projects are always some of my favorite because I really have no clue what I'm doing going into them. I have no clue what kind of wood that antique stool was made out of, but I'm gonna build mine out of this solid eight quarter piece of black walnut. The first thing I did was take some rough measurements off of this antique stool, and then I took my big old piece of eight quarter black walnut, I went over to my chop saw, and I started cutting it down into smaller, more manageable pieces. Now you would think after woodworking all these years, I would know how to cut a board in half but apparently I don't. And I quickly pinched this eight quarter walnut onto the blade and took a good 15 minutes trying to get it unstuck without damaging the arbor on my miter saw. I decided a rubber mallet was my best bet and I just beat that piece of eight quarter black walnut until it popped off and I was ready to move on to the milling process. Now because this black walnut is rough cut, there wasn't a square edge on it to begin with. So the first thing I needed to do was get a nice straight edge on one side so that I could run it through the table saw and rip it down to less than eight inches. Because, well, my joiner is only eight inches wide and if it's wider than that, I can't face join it. Once I had a nice flat edge on the face of the board, I went over to the planer and I planed all my boards down until they were an inch and a quarter thick. Why an inch and a quarter? I have no clue, it just looked like a nice size once I got there. Now pretty much all of the pieces for this stool can be made out of just solid walnut, except for the round stool top. I am going to have to glue two pieces together for that and I figured I might as well do that right away so that those could be drying up while I'm working on other things. So I took two pieces, put them in clamps with a little bit of glue, made sure they were nice and straight across the top and I left those to dry. Then I went over to the table saw and I started ripping down some pieces that were exactly inch and a quarter wide because that's what I had planed down my stock to so now I had perfect inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter sticks that eventually will be stool parts. Now I'm going to make a three-legged stool and I figured the best way to figure out the positioning of my three legs would be a triangle but this is a right triangle and all the sides aren't the same length. What I need is an equilateral triangle, which means that all the sides are the same length and there's three angles that are all 60 degrees. So using my speed square, I'm gonna set the angle, well, at 30 degrees because that's half a 60 and that's what you have to do to draw an equilateral triangle. I'm gonna draw one side over here, one side over there, and boom, equilateral triangle, all three sides the same length. Now you might be asking, how in the world is this gonna help you build a stool? And why are you now making an even smaller equilateral triangle? Well, I had this idea that maybe if I cut out a small equilateral triangle, that would help me with the stretchers that would connect my three legs together. 
Now, if you're completely lost at this point, I know my brain works in weird ways, just stick with me. So the first thing I did was cut out this tiny equilateral triangle, and then I had to test to make sure it was really perfectly equilateral and that all the sides were exactly the same length. Now the antique stool had three stretchers that came together and looked something like this, at a point in the middle, all intersecting. But I thought it might be cool if we did something a little trickier. Basically, you have a small equilateral triangle in the middle and all the stretchers follow the outside of that triangle to create this kind of interwoven bird's nest of stretchers in the middle. And then in the very center of that interwoven jumble of stretchers would just be a hole that would be the perfect shape of an equilateral triangle. The only problem is I don't know if this is going to work and it seems really, really hard and I had no clue where to start but I thought maybe I would need more than just one triangle. And if you're like, how the heck does that make any sense? Just stick with me on this. My weird brain has a plan. So I cut out a bunch more little equilateral triangles. The only problem, they weren't exactly the same size as that first one. And I did this on purpose. I made them just a little bit larger. Then I took my first one that was the size I wanted it to be and I took some CA glue and I glued on one that was just a little bit bigger on the top so that it overhung just a little bit on all the sides. If you're lost, don't worry. Then I went over to the router table and quickly realized that I would kill myself and lose a couple fingers if I tried to route it out on the router table. So I took a piece of double-sided tape, I stuck it to my workbench, and I stuck my triangular pieces down to the workbench. Then I used a quarter-inch shank flush trim bit from Bits and Bits, and I made my triangle that was just a little bit bigger the exact same size as my first triangle. Now I had two triangles stacked on each other that were exactly the same size. And I just kept repeating this process, working my way up, until I started to get this long stretched out triangle kind of like a triangular stick or tower. Look at it, it's beautiful. And it's an exact equilateral triangle, that is key. Then I took my triangular tower and I glued it in the center of a big piece of plywood. See, I told you this would all make sense. What I needed was some sort of template that I could build my stretcher pieces around and ensure that they were all at the exact right angle. And I don't mean right angle as in 90 degrees, I mean the correct angle. I had to overlap all my stretchers and then using a knife, I scored the angle onto the lower piece and this will allow me to cut a bunch of half laps and hopefully hook all these stretchers together. Now cutting the half laps really wasn't as hard as it may seem. I just set my crosscut sled to 30 degrees because, well, that's the angle I needed to make my equilateral triangle. I set the height of the blade to exactly 5 eighths of an inch because, well, 5 eighths is exactly one half of an inch and a quarter. And then I very carefully started running my pieces through my dado saw, carving out a nice little channel that was hopefully the right angle that I needed it to be. Then I'd carry that piece over to my little triangular tower template and make sure that my other stretcher piece fit into my freshly cut half lap and still maintain that angle along my little triangular tower. Now you might be thinking, this looks cool, but it does not look like a stool. But remember, this is just the stretcher piece that's gonna connect the three legs that are gonna hold up the stool. So yes, I might be going about building this in a weird way, but I do have a plan. After I got one half lap cut, I just kept working my way through all the angles, going over to the table saw, cutting another half lap, making sure they fit together, and more importantly, making sure they still fall the right angles around my triangle in the middle. Once I had a couple half laps together, then I did the same thing on the opposite piece, scoring more lines, cutting more channels, testing the fit, until pretty soon I had worked all the way around and realized that I was somewhat of an idiot. You see, at some point, I thought it would be really cool if not only did they all half lap each other, but they were kind of woven together. One underneath, one over the top, one over the top, one underneath. The only problem is, it's really hard to weave together solid inch and a quarter pieces of black walnut. Because, well, they don't want to bend. So after cutting all of my pieces, 
I decided it might be impossible to actually get them to hook together. But I did not come this far to fail now. I got them all as close as I could, and then when all else fails, just start whacking at them with a mallet. A little tap tap here, a little tap tap there, and slowly they started to work their way down into each individual half lap and come together in this beautiful woven triangular stretcher thingamabob. But as soon as I got them together in a dry fit test run, it dawned on me that I might not be able to get these apart. Luckily for me, one tap from the mallet and one of my pieces snapped in half. Now you might be saying, well, how is that lucky? Well, it's because there was actually a crack running through the middle of the entire piece, and I probably wouldn't have realized that crack was there had I not put them together and tried to mallet them back apart. And it was a clean break, so really it was an easy fix. I went over, squirted a little glue in that crack, clamped it up, and I decided that I'm just not gonna be able to put that bird's nest piece together until I'm actually ready to glue them up and not take them apart. By that time, my glued up blank for my stool seat was dry. I took it out of clamps and ran it through the drum sander. Now I need to cut out a circle that's 10 inches in diameter and I was feeling lazy. So I went into my kitchen and I grabbed a frying pan because, well, that's what you do when you need to cut out a 10 inch circle. You see, lucky for me, this frying pan just happens to be exactly 10 inches in diameter. And all you really need to cut out a circle is a template. So after looking around my shop a little bit and not finding one, naturally, I went to the kitchen for a pan. I used the pan to roughly trace out the shape of my circle onto my walnut blank. I went over to the bandsaw and I cut out that shape, leaving a little bit of meat on the outside of the bone. I added some double-sided tape to the bottom of my blank and then I stuck that blank to the bottom of my frying pan because I'm a real woodworker. Once I had my blank firmly stuck to the bottom of my frying pan with a little bit overhanging on all of the sides, I went over to my router table with a nice half inch shank compression flush trim bit and I just started cutting out a perfect circle. Now you laugh. But the frying pan works amazingly because it's really deep, so you got plenty of room to work with, and it's got these two nice handles on either side, so it's really easy to hold on to. And in no time, I had a perfect 10 inch circle, and I didn't even break a sweat. Next, I just went over and popped it off the bottom of my pan, and boom, my stool seat was complete. Kind of. It still looked sort of plain. And I was trying to figure out in my head if there was a way that I could add a little cove to the entire top of the seat to give it some more depth and just make it look more inviting. That's when I had this really weird idea that's either going to be really cool or really stupid. You see, I was thinking you can cut coves on the table saw by running a long straight piece of wood across the table saw blade at an angle. And if you can cut a cove on a straight piece of wood, why wouldn't you be able to cut a cove on a round piece of wood? I started out by gluing up a square of scrap birch plywood that was just tight enough on my walnut round to hold it in place, but it could still spin freely. Then I super glued another piece of scrap plywood onto the back of the blank so that I could kind of use it as a handle and spin it around with my hand. Then I took another piece of scrap birch ply and I super glued it along one edge. This is going to give me some way to attach this jig to my table saw fence. Because if I'm going to be spinning around a solid piece of walnut on top of a moving table saw blade, I don't really want the jig moving around. Next, I need to figure out how I could get this jig perfectly centered on top of my blade. I almost forgot. I got to remove the riving knife because, well, that could cause some issues. After I removed the riving knife, it was back to making sure that the blade was dead center in the middle of my square, both left to right and top to bottom. Once I had it there, I firmly clamped my jig to my table saw fence so it couldn't move, and I lowered the blade all the way down. Now I'm not going to be able to see the blade while I'm doing this. I'm going to kind of be doing this blind. So I did some tests and I figured out how many half turns it would take to raise the blade up to 3 eighths of an inch because 
That just seemed like a good depth for a cove on top of a stool seat. I mean, I've never done this before. What the heck do I know? Then I was ready to either be a genius or lose some fingers. I turned the table saw on, I raised the blade one half turn, and then I spun my blank around 360 degrees. Then I turned the table saw off, waited for the blade to stop moving, and I lifted up my blank to reveal the tiniest little baby cove. But that's all right, we're headed in the right direction. After one successful pass, I was pretty confident that this wasn't gonna kill me, so I just repeated the same thing over again. I raised the table saw blade one half turn, I rotated my blank 360 degrees, turned the table saw off, and my cove got just a little bit deeper and a little bit wider. So then I did the same thing over again, turn the table saw on, spin the whole thing around, raise the blade, and a little bigger still. Now I kept doing this over and over again. I figured it was gonna take five half turns until I got to the depth that I wanted. So slowly but surely, I turned the table saw on, raised the blade one half turn, and finally I got to three eighths of an inch deep. But as you can see, my cove is still pretty small as far as width goes. Now here's where the anxiety level went up a little bit, because next what I had to do was make that cove wider. And the way that I had to do it was to unclamp the jig from the fence while the table saw was running. Now holding the jig firmly in one hand to make sure that it stayed tight against the fence, I inched the jig forward about an eighth of an inch. In theory, this will allow me to start bringing that cove out toward the edges of my stool seat. Then I reclamped the jig against the fence and I did another spin of my walnut blank, 360 degrees, maybe a little bit more just for good measure. Then I loosened my clamps, slid my entire jig forward another eighth of an inch or so, then retightened my clamps and repeated the process. Once the clamps were tight, I very carefully and slowly spun my walnut blank 360 degrees, cutting that cove just a little bit wider, and then I turned off the table saw and checked. As you can see, that cove is starting to inch out towards the outside of my stool seat. Now that I knew it was gonna work, it was just wash, rinse, repeat. Spin, cut, cut, spin, and I just kept doing this little by little, eighth of an inch here, sixteenth of an inch there. You can see my tick marks along my saw fence until finally I would brought that cove out to a distance that I liked the look of. Not only was I shocked how well this worked, I was shocked how clean of a cut I got. Just a little bit of hand sanding and this thing is gonna look great. You know, New Year's is really funny because people get so caught up on these New Year's resolutions and they're always kind of revolving around health. Eating healthier, exercising more, we want to take care of ourselves. But do you ever stop and think, are we taking care of the other people around us should the worst happen and we're not around anymore? That's why life insurance is so important. And I know what you're thinking, life insurance, what a headache, that's got to be hard to find. Well, it doesn't have to be. If you get on Policy Genius, they can help you find the perfect policy for you, and it's not that hard. You don't believe me? Just check out this. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Their licensed, award-winning agents can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance company, so that means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. It's no wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Now you might be thinking, all oh, that's well and good, but where do I go? How do I sign up? What do I do next? Well, that's the easy part. You just do this. Your family deserves peace of mind, and a life insurance policy through Policy Genius can give it to them. Head to policygenius.com slash bourbon moth or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. So when you're making your news resolutions this year, don't just think about what's going to benefit you. Think about those around you and finding the right life insurance policy is an important thing to do. Make it easy with Policy Genius. 
With my stool seat somewhat complete, it was time to start working on the legs again. So the first thing I needed to do was determine the angle that the legs were splayed out. I used a bevel gauge and this digital angle finder thing, and I figured out that the legs on the antique stool were just about 14 degrees off of 90. So I went over to my drill press and I changed the plate on my drill press to be at a 14 degree angle. Then I had to figure out how far apart the legs were on the top of the stool seat. I figured that those were about five inches, so it was back to my scrap plywood, and yes, I made another equilateral triangle with five inch sides. I figured this would be a perfect template to lay out exactly where my legs would come through my stool seat on the top. Next, I took my little equilateral triangle, I set it on the top of my stool seat, and I measured out from each point to make sure that it was perfectly centered in the middle of my seat, and then I marked each point. This is where I'm gonna drill my holes for those through tenons of my legs. Then I went over to my drill press that I had already set to my 14 degree angle, and I made this little plywood template to hold the seat top, and I just started drilling, hoping that I was doing this right, because again, I've never made one of these stools before, and if I mess this up, I'm gonna have a lot of makeup work to make another one of these stool tops. But as a wise man always said, when in doubt, drill it out. And that wise man was me. And I said that actually for the first time just then. But that's going to be one of those things in the future that people are like, you know, a wise man once said, and they're going to be referring to this video right now. Because you know what? I did drill it out. Now on to the next problem. The legs that need to come through the top are square and the holes that I just drilled in the top are round. Lucky for me, I know how to use Amazon, and I was able to find this sweet pencil sharpener that fits in the end of your drill. Honestly, I don't know what this thing's called, but it is exactly for this purpose of taking square stock and giving it a perfectly one inch round tenon. It's pretty awesome. You just chalk it up in your drill and use it like a giant pencil sharpener. I mean, it took a little bit to figure out, but look at that. I mean, yeah, it looks a little bit rough and I rubbed a little paint off on the end of my tenon, but at the end of my square stock, I have a pretty darn good looking one inch round tenon that fits right through those holes I drilled on my stool seat. I mean, I don't remember the exact brand name or even what this thing is called, but I will put a link down in the video description. Pretty soon, I made round tenons on the end of three of my legs and I stuck them through the top of my stool seat. And I don't know if you're able to see it yet, but this thing's really starting to look like a stool. Now back to that whole bird's nest stretcher thing. Now somehow I gotta figure out how to get that stretcher mounted between these three legs cut to the exact right length with through tenons. And I have no clue how I'm gonna do it. So not knowing if it was the right answer, I decided the first thing I need to do is make the stretcher an arbitrary length. So I just picked some measurements at random and decided to cut each one of my stretcher pieces down. I figured if I cut the stretcher smaller to a size that would probably fit somewhere in between those legs, then I could get them all glued up, I could put round tenons on the end of each one of the pieces, and then I would have measurements to work off of and hopefully figure out how to get those mounted in between my legs. So after cutting each one of those stretcher pieces down, I used my fancy Amazon pencil sharpener and I cut my round tenons on the end of each one of my pieces. And then I thought, I'm probably ready to actually glue these pieces together. So I kind of loosely intertwined them into the right position. And then I went over to my table saw because it has a perfectly flat surface. I added glue and I pounded them all together. The only problem is that, well, I forgot to press record on the camera when I did that. And so you're just gonna have to take my word for it that I did put glue in there and I used the mallet and I know that you missed the most satisfying part, but I promise. They all went together and it left me with this thing. Now that my stretcher is all glued up, I should be able to take rough measurements off of all of my angles and figure out where I need to drill out holes in my legs to get this thing mounted. 
Now I figured it was about 10 and three quarters of an inch from point to point where those tenons would go through the legs. So being a very technical woodworker I am, I just kind of worked the tape measure down the legs until I found the point that they were spread out 10 and three quarters of an inch. Then I held my finger there and I made a little mark. Once I had a mark on one leg, I could just measure down from the top and I could transfer that measurement to the other two legs. And I thought this is probably an okay way of figuring out where I need to drill holes. I don't know. I mean, my drill press was still set at 14 degrees, so I took each leg over there and I drilled a hole through the leg right on that mark. Kind of like this. And then I shoved one of my stretcher tenons through that hole. And I mean, it looks like it's at the right angle, I think. So I did the same thing to the other two legs. Now, moment of truth. I went over to my workbench. I stuck one tenon through one leg. I stuck another tenon through the other leg. And believe it or not, I stuck the last tenon through the last leg. So far, so good. It's looking somewhat like a stool. Then, I grabbed my top, I lined up my holes, and, well, it actually worked. You thought I was gonna say that it didn't work, huh? You have no confidence in me. I think this is gonna fit pretty good, but I'm not ready to glue it up yet. Now these are through tenons, and to make sure that they stay put and are nice and tight, I'm going to wedge them. So they're gonna be wedged through tenons. So using my bandsaw, I cut a nice slit down the center of each one of the tenons where I can pound my wedge. Then at the bottom of that slit, I make it a little bit wider with the bandsaw blade so that glue can collect down there and not split my tenon in half. Next, I need to cut my wedges. So I made this little jig just out of some scrap pieces of plywood. It's got this little angle to it and a little rest that I can shove a piece of hard maple in there. And then running that through my bandsaw, I can cut nice, long, tapered wedges. Just like this. Now I could have used walnut for my wedges so they matched, but I thought that the hard maple would be a nice contrast. So very carefully I cut a bunch of long wedges on the bandsaw until I had enough for all of my through tenons. And then finally, I think we're actually ready to glue this thing up. Now most glue ups are stressful, but this one, well, it was super stressful because not only have I never built anything like this before, I had to get glue in all of these mortises and everything together and then wedge them. So I didn't have a lot of time to work here. So moving as fast as I could without being too sloppy, I added glue to all my mortises. Now I didn't add a ton of glue because you really don't need it. These things are gonna be wedged and the friction fit is gonna hold them pretty darn good. The glue is just an added layer of protection. Once I got glue in all my mortises on the legs, I hooked my stretcher pieces in, as you can see there, and then it was onto my top. Now I had yet to seat this top because I didn't want to hammer it down all the way when I was dry fitting it because I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to get it off. So I was very relieved when I started whacking it and everything sat into place just the way that it should. It was nice and tight and even without the wedges in there, this thing seemed pretty darn sturdy. With all of my through tenons tightly seated and all of my round mortises, it was time to wedge them in place and really make this thing secure. So I spread some glue on my maple wedges and I tapped them in with a cloth framing hammer because I'm a real woodworker. First I worked my way around and I did all the through tenons on the legs and once I was done with those, I was almost ready to add the wedges on the top and I decided that the tenons sticking out the top were just a little bit too long for my liking. So before I wedged them, I just trimmed them down a little bit with my oscillating multi-tool. Then I spread some glue on some more maple wedges and I tapped them in from the top, again with my cloth framing hammer. Fine woodworking at its best. And just like that, my stool was all assembled, my wedges were inserted, and all I had to do was wait for the glue to dry, which was, you know, about an hour later. 
Then very carefully, I took a flush trim pole saw and one by one, I trimmed off all the excess tenon on each leg and I sanded them smooth. And would you look at that, a beautiful round through tenon with a white maple wedge. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing and believe me, I really, really don't. I mean, I'm making this up as I go, but the best woodworkers aren't really good woodworkers. They're just really good at pretending to be. So, if you look at it that way, I'm a really good woodworker. After getting all the tenons trimmed down on the sides, I started working on the top. But this was a lot harder because of that cove. I couldn't really cut the tenons flush, so I got them as close as I could, but there was still a good quarter of an inch sticking up, and that was too much to sand down. So I grabbed this little compression bit, chalked it up in my trim router, which just happened to have a circle that was wide enough to fit over the ends of these tenons, and then very carefully, I kind of used it as a mini router sled to get rid of most of the excess tenon sticking up through that seat. Then I just worked my way around, did this on all three of those through tenons, until finally, all I had to do was sand down the little bit that was left over. And look at that with that nice shallow cove, those through tenons, those maple wedges. I cleaned it up a little bit by hand and the top of this stool was looking sexy. But it was still really, really awkwardly tall because I never bothered to cut the legs down. So I measured the size of the antique stool, which was only 21 inches. Then I measured down from the top of my stool, 21 inches, and I made a mark on the leg. Next, I leveled out the top of my stool seat to make sure, well, it was level, of course. That's what you do when you level something out. And then I pulled out my laser level so that I could get an even mark on all three of my legs. I raised up the level until it was right on that mark down 21 inches from the top that I made earlier. And then I marked each leg right on that laser. And then because I'm a real woodworker and I do things the most accurate way possible, I just awkwardly held each leg under my miter saw and I cut kind of roughly along my pencil line. This is fun and kind of, well, like I said before, awkward. But, you know, I got the job done because I'm a real woodworker. Now the real nice thing about a three-legged stool is it's never going to wobble because it's only got three points of contact but I still wanted to get it as close as possible to perfect. So I went over to my table saw and I stuck a piece of sandpaper to the metal surface and I just kind of rotated the legs around and sanded them all until they were perfectly flat on the bottom. And just like that, the stool was all put together. It was sanded, it was level, and we were ready for finish. So I cracked open a can of Rubio Monocoat Pure and I started making that walnut pop like my sister's jean jacket in middle school, right after she got that bedazzler. But that's a story for another time. Now normally, finishing is not my favorite part of a job and I just make Craig do it. But when you accomplish something like this that you've never built before and you're actually successful at it, rubbing finish on it is quite enjoyable. Watching all those through tenons come to life, seeing that maple pop out in that beautiful contrast, and then you can do all these cool artsy shots of it finished while you talk lightly and play soft music. Wow, I gotta say, that was pretty darn fun. I never thought I'd have that much fun playing with my own stool. Stool joke. Anyways, we're gonna do plans on this stool because I think you would enjoy making one at home. So there's a link in the video description. You click on that, it'll take you to our website. You can buy plans for the stool and plans for a bunch of our other past projects. Make sure you do that. And just go home, get in the shop, try something different for a change. It's actually really fun. It's a brown stool too. Stool joke. <laughs>